Okay, so yeah, as the slide says, emph emphasis here is in, on improving network overlay performance on existing hardware. Uh, quick agenda, just gonna go over what's currently there for tunnels. Um, enabling TX checksum offload and enabling GRO and RX checksum offload for encapsulated tunnels. So right now the way things currently are set up, um, most tunnels on most hardware will end up on a, well, the traffic for most tunnels will end up on a single queue um, if you're dealing with any two endpoints on a tunnel because, um, mo well, at least in the case of our hardware, we're using RSS, which only understands TCP and UDP. So when you go beyond that into BXLAN or NVGRE, you end up uh, losing the data that's inside the tunnel. So it ends up, everything shows up as a pair of endpoints. To make matters worse, in the case of VXLAN, since it's encapsulated inside a UDP protocol, we normally ignore UDP because it can be fragmented, which causes out of order problems. So the one thing I'm calling out here, um, at least in the case of our next, we have a feature for turning on or off the UDP flow via the RX flow hash interface. So you can specify that you wanna include the source and destination port numbers which is important in the case of VXLAN because the source port actually contains a hash which will allow for queue distribution. Um, let's see. So other than that, uh, work's already been done to add TX checksum support uh, generically for uh, both VXLAN and NVGRE tunnel types uh, as well as I believe IP and IP. Uh, but there's only a few NICs that are actually supporting this. I believe Broadcom is one of them. Actually, none of our NICs, I don't, I-40E still doesn't have it reported yet, the tunnel offload. Okay. Yeah, so right now there's like, I think the Broadcom NIC's the only one that actually advertises it. Um, I'll get into that more later. Um, RX checksum. As far as I know, uh, there's nothing that supports VXLAN RX offloads that I'm aware of. Um, Specifically, part of the trouble there is the port numbers aren't necessarily fixed for VXLAN, so it's kind of hard to identify. Um, well, they're well, they still aren't fixed. As my understanding, you can support more than one port number for VXLAN. Yeah. So anyway, more into that. I can get into that more later. Uh, but the other thing, GSO was added a, a little while back, um, and I verified it was working a couple releases ago and submitted a couple patches to fix a couple things that weren't working. Uh, yeah. Yep. Well, the, the problem is it can do the outer checksum in the case of the UDP. NVGRE, most NICs don't do GRE, or at least none of our Intel NICs do NVGRE checksums. So they're not gonna do that, and because it's NVGRE, it doesn't look at the inner, head, inner payload. So, because most of these aren't tunnel aware NICs that I'm talking about here. Yeah, some of it, yeah. That's actually what I was kind of getting into. So, um, for, Well, TSO, well, we're using GSO over tunnels. TSO will be there eventually in the hardware, but I'm not covering hardware that does TSO for tunnels. This is existing hardware, not yet to be released hardware. So the one thing I wanted to call out here, um, for those that were paying attention to the patches that were going out when we were enabling TX checksum, I put out a proof of concept patch that actually enabled it for the IXGBE driver at the time when I put it out, I put it out as an RFC. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm still not quite certain what it is the community wants in order to be considered TX checksum compliant for tunnels. Uh, essentially, the, the approach I had here was a bit of a hack. It treated the entire tunnel header as one giant, well, yeah, everything from the VXLAN, or the Ethernet header, VXLAN on, as one giant L2 header. And so that, can have some issues, like you can't do uh, uh, VLAN tag insertion on the outer header in that situation. And so 
That may resolve itself, though, in the fact that if you put a VLAN in between, I don't think it would pass the encapsulation offloads over. But so anyway, uh, one of the things I want to do is talk with a few people here, hopefully during this conference, about uh, figuring out whether or not it's acceptable for us to just treat the encapsulation header, VXLAN, all the way through the outer header as one giant L2 header. If that's OK, I might just go ahead and push uh, the patch for IXGBE and probably our other adapters as well to just enable the TX checksum offload. Um, from what I've seen data-wise, it actually has some benefit. It actually performed about as well as GSO without TX checksum off. Well, by itself, it performed better than just having GSO on. The two combined, I was able to transmit line rate uh, without too much effort uh, using just standard 1500 byte frames. Well, if, and see this is where the, the problem is, it, given that the UDP outer checksum isn't required and it can be zero, that given the NVGRE isn't using a checksum and doesn't have any optional headers like the sequence number that has to be dealt with, see that's the thing is it's, it's all the details of what really needs to be in there. And I, it can be zero. And that's the thing I never got a clear definition of is it acceptable for us to just always make it zero, or is somebody going to come along? Because that's the thing, is when it originally came out, it was one port number. So that's the thing. The, the definition for VXLAN is still a little bit in flux. And I'm just, before I put something like this in, I just wanted to know. If you have to do an outer New hardware might be able to support that. That's the thing, is it's what. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. Whatever I put in, that's the thing. Is If I push this in, you know, it's the Linux kernel models, therefore, this has to be supported going forward for all future versions. So then are we going to have to add an extra bit to say, okay, I support outer checksum too? Or, so that was kind of my thought. But anyway, so I put the patch out there as an RFC, but I may be looking at trying to push it in in the future in order to try to improve the performance. Um, Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so we can hack. Essentially, what this comes down to is we can hack things on existing hardware and cheat and treat the encapsulation header like a giant L2 header. The other bit in all this, um, with that set up, I uh, did some more testing and found that we were then bottlenecked on the RX side. Um, the big issue is essentially. For every frame, we're having to take two trips through the network stack, and then if you're running a tunnel on top of it, then it has to go from uh, kernel space to user space and into the VM. And that has a lot of significant overhead. Um, the one way I found is to, to actually mitigate that was to implement, uh, I'm calling it out as GRO tunnels, because I'm not going to push this in as an LRO optimization, but I was testing it using LRO. Um, what I found was actually able to then achieve line rate if I were, went through and performed a uh, header comparison, and then when I started to see frames I could join, I'd do checksums on both, just in software, join them, and then hand them up, uh, pass them up the stack. Uh, with that, I was actually able to cut the CPU utilization uh, in half, essentially, and then uh, pass the, or got up to line rate instead of being limited to 8.6 gigabits per second. Well, the, this is for, well, in theory, you could try to do something like checksum before, like my original implementation, I was just checksumming everything that came in, which, yeah, that's a shoot yourself in the foot as soon as you can't, as soon as you're processing frames, you can't coalesce, you don't want to be doing checksum on everything. And so uh, that was just a note there essentially to myself that if you're going to do it, only do the checksum if you're going to do the merge. That's the only spot where you're really going to see any gain, because either way, you're doing checksum in software. But in this case, you're actually able to cut the uh, extra trip through the stack for the frames out, 
by then doing the checksum there. And so you're not having to do uh, the full trip up the stack and then like either uh, TCP com doing the combining or GRO doing the combining up beyond the VXLAN interface. But yeah, and so checksum on merge instead of checksum always, because that's the thing is, I was, yeah. I was trying to do checksum on all TCP frames that came in and I realized that would be bad. Um, but yeah, and then like I said, proof of concept results, it cut the CPU utilization in half, which I figure is pretty significant uh, given that this is hardware that doesn't actually support any of this. Future hardware is gonna have probably support for RX checksum at least. And so at that point, we can probably just do GRO without having to do the extra uh, checksum work. And so it may be something where we implement GRO and then have an add-on for a while to do the RX checksum if it's needed on a merge. No, the problem is most, most NICs will end up doing parsing of some sort on the frame. And they'll get as far as, like in the case of uh, VXLAN, they'll get as far as the UDP header. Just assume it's a UDP packet and do the UDP checksum there which it's zero in most cases, so it says, okay, no checksum, done. Yep, future generation. Yeah, and that goes back to the uh, note on VXLAN. It'd be nice if we knew all the ports, which I think Joseph uh, Gasparak has just pushed a patch so we can register and no uh, get access to notifications when additional VXLAN ports have been added so we can track all the different VXLANs beyond any non-standard one that's used. Well, right. But see, the thing is, in the case of VXLAN, the problem is you know, it's, it shows up as UDP, because the way it, it's encapsulated, it's encapsulated inside of a UDP protocol. So existing hardware looks at it and goes, yeah, it's UDP. Okay, done, it's zero checksum. I don't have to do any more work. Um, what this would be doing is in software, we'd walk through and do that additional bit of work in software to go through and identify, okay, this is a VXLAN packet. Let's take it a few steps further. Okay, now I know what the TCP header is. If I see another TCP header for this, I'll checksum it and combine the two, otherwise, I'll just pass up the stack and let it uh, happen normally. Um, let's see. Yeah, and I think that's most of that. Yeah, that's all I had. Um, yeah, the one other thing I have to do some digging into yet, it looks like we ran into an issue on, uh, was it? Oh, SKB dodgy for, or GSO dodgy for, uh, VXLAN offloads, I have to go get that fixed. Because it looks like uh, when you put that through a VXLAN tunnel, it comes out the other side and it doesn't know what to do with it, so it's not segmenting it right now. Yeah. So, if, <laughs> I don't know if anyone here is doing the GSO work for the VXLAN stuff, but if nothing else, I'll probably work on that next week or two, so. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The GS GSO is there for GRE. Yeah, GRE, IP, and IP, and uh, VXLAN all do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was asking about TSO earlier. He's like, he was asking when we were going to get the NIC TSO, and I'm like, let's deal with GSO for now. It's a software offload, and we'll get to hardware, future hardware features when we deal with future hardware. Maybe next year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, in in software we've got GSO already, so 
That's the thing. Is it's like, that's why I'm thinking Jiro is the place to go ahead and take care of the coalescing. So then you take care of it at a lower level and you just add a couple of protocol handlers. So it'd be in the case of VXLAN, you're adding it to the UDP uh, handler. And in the case of NVGRE, it's its own separate protocol. So. Yeah. Yeah. 